Hey guys, we're back to destroy some flat earthers, yay! I just want to round things up with these guys. Today we have a flat earther attempting to explain how the sun disproves the round earth. I know, I know, it seems that anything and everything will be used by flat earthers in an attempt to prove their idea. Don't get used to this guys, I'm not shifting the focus of my channel to flat earthers, alright? I'm sorry, but there's only so much you can do on this topic before you get bored of it. So without further ado, let's get started. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that this video is pretty long, it's about 20 minutes, but I'll be cutting it down since most of it is just time lapses and shit. If you want to see the original video, I'll have the link in the description, as always. The Earth. Is it really just a big ball floating in space? Yes. Or... Let's talk about some obvious flaws of this model. First of all, you claim that the area that isn't lit up by the sun is night. The biggest problem I have with this is that you should still be able to see the sun during this time. Even if you can't see it with your naked eye, we have telescopes and various detection methods. And guess what? We don't see the sun during the night. It's as simple as that. You can even fly as high as you want with your stupid GoPro camera hot air balloon shit and you will still never see the sun during the night. Second, there are plenty of planes that fly around, as you probably know, and of course, there are planes that fly relatively close to the South Pole. We never fly directly above it, we usually fly around it, and this is due to safety reasons. And look at your stupid model, it would take us ages to fly all the way around. I mean, simply flying between two sides of the Northern Hemisphere over the North Pole would take over 11 hours! Think about how long it would take us to travel around the circumference of the Earth! Ridiculous! Those are only two problems of many with this model. I won't get to them now since I gotta go through this video. And maybe it's completely still, just like we experience. Of course we don't experience it, it's part of relativity. That's why if your car is going at a constant speed, you won't be able to distinctively feel it. It's the same concept. And maybe the sun isn't big, but it's very small and very close, and not illuminating the Earth from 93 million miles, but is illuminating locally. Okay, I'm gonna skip the rest of this introduction and get to his arguments. Oh man, and watch how this sun comes at you. Boom. I mean, come on. <laughs> you know that it is most common to see the sun larger during sunset and sunrise, right? I don't know where you got your footage, but depending on the atmospheric condition and also optical illusions, we're going to perceive the sun as different sizes. However, the most commonly seen is the sun increasing in size during sunrise. Let me just show you a visual, and this is explained quite well by science and is a pretty neat optical illusion. Here's one thing you flat earthers love to do, and that is to cherry pick footages that fit with your conclusion and ignore everything else. Well, what about this? Are you going to ignore this too? And that's all perspective. If you look at jet trails, Google images, you'll see them, they start out low at the horizon, they come up overhead, look at that thing. They come up overhead and then they go down to the horizon. Well, your perspective doesn't seem to explain why the sun sets behind the horizon. You do talk about this later, so I'll just wait until we get there. Just because the sun may follow some path of some condensed water in the air doesn't exactly prove anything. It just shows that you have poor imaginative powers. You guys always seem to forget the size of the Earth. When we live on a planet that big, we won't be able to notice things such as the curvature of the Earth or sometimes the real path of the sun in the sky. It also sets up illusions which you guys interpret to mean the flat Earth. That's ridiculous! Okay, back to the Copernican principle, and this is what they tell us. The sun is 93 million miles away. Oh my god, what's with you flat Earthers using miles? God damn it! <laughs> you guys are pieces of shit. Now I'm going to show you evidence through sunsets that shows the sun 
light following the sun over the horizon and it shrinks as it goes over. Now there's no way it would do that if the sun is 93 million miles away. Okay, first I'm going to show you some footage from the ISS. Okay, now watch this animation. Watch this sunset. Now this is exactly, if they came to me and said, do an animation, this is how I would do it. If the sun were 93 million miles away. Just like that. Have the whole horizon fade evenly. But that's not what we see. Okay, I'm going to let him finish his point. Okay, wow, look at that. Look how the light lifts off the ground like a big wedge or like lifting up a sheet of paper. That's incredible footage. Yeah, the horizon may seem to fade away evenly from space. You're so high up, you're not going to see what you see from Earth. And in addition, when you're that high up, you're not going to have the atmosphere messing with the sunlight distribution. We know that the atmosphere likes to scatter the light from the sun. It's the reason the sun appears to be yellow and the sky appears to be blue. The atmosphere can do magical things, really. So, when you view the Earth from space, you're not going to have that effect, or at least not as much of an effect. In addition, viewing the Earth from high up will give you a larger field of vision. You can literally see more of the Earth. This will allow you to see the overall motion of the sun's illumination. The time lapse you showed in your video is just a camera on the ground. Your field of view is going to be much, much smaller than if you were in space. As a result, you see details like scattering of the light or having the light appear to have certain behaviors. But on a larger scale from space, you won't be able to notice it. It's that simple. Okay, here's a phenomenon that you might be wondering. How in the heck do you explain this on a flat Earth? Well, this footage is taken from Alaska during the summer. Okay, I'm going to skip this part since all he is doing is attempting to justify this footage using the flat Earth model. It's nothing new, and it doesn't exactly challenge the globe Earth, so I'm going to move on to his next major point. The next three slides, I'm going to do a comparison of side by side. The one on the left, the camera's above the clouds. The camera on the right is ground level. And the point for the side by side comparison from the ground level and the level above the clouds is that above the clouds we're only maybe a mile or so up and if the sun appears to be closer to the camera well that means it's probably much closer because if the sun were 93 million miles away a mile closer wouldn't make any difference at all to its visual appearance except that the sun doesn't appear larger or closer in the footage above the clouds i mean i'm looking at this and i just can't see it Looks like it's the same size to me. You may have some variation sometimes from the atmosphere's interference, but assuming everything is held constant, the sun does look like it's the same size. Okay, here's a little uh, illustrator or a little cartoon from a website called timeanddate.com. You'll notice that it rises from below the horizon and sets below the horizon. Now you might be saying, well, how is that possible? I can see now you're saying that it rises and lowers due to perspective, but how does it disappear below the horizon? Oh, please do explain. This is going to be great. Because of the fact that all parallel lines and planes converge at your eye-level horizon, this is according to the perspective. I'm not making this up. If in fact, and they do, they converge at your eye-level horizon visually, then it makes sense that after that point, they diverge, meaning they then separate, so the sun would continue on a downward track. The sun does what? It sinks into the earth? In our perspective? You gotta be... You, you gotta be shitting me! I can't believe I have to explain this converging perspective to you, but here goes. The reason it happens is because as we see further, we see more from our field of vision. Take a look at this image. The domain of our vision spreads out as it gets further. Objects that are close appear to be larger because it takes up a greater percentage of our field of vision. As we move further from the eye, we can literally see more. More things can fit in the field of vision. As a result, objects in it take up a lesser percentage of the domain, thus making it appear smaller for us. There is no ultimate converging point that can be measured out. In other words, objects cannot move past the point like you claim the sun is doing. Have you ever taken a math class? It's sort of like an asymptote. Kind of. It converges to a point, but it'll never reach that point. It's really basic, and you flat earthers seem to always have trouble understanding it. 
things only appear to converge to a point because it gets smaller. However, if we look at the sun, the sun isn't converging to a point. And like I said earlier, objects cannot move past this converging point, so your diagram is just a flat out lie. I mean, look at this. Even when it's night, the sun should still be in view. How could the sun have moved below the horizon? Perspective? Please don't joke around. Okay, these next three slides, uh, the sun is almost set already behind the horizon, but watch as the sunlight shrinks and follows the sun. It's definitely a locally illuminating sun, not far away, not very big, and definitely not 93 million miles away. You haven't explained one bit on how you reached those three conclusions, but nonetheless, you're just repeating yourself now, so I'm going to fast forward to see if you have anything new to present. In case you missed it before, this is due to the atmosphere scattering the light rays of the sun. It's not a phenomenon that can only be seen in a flat earth model. It's just a property of our atmosphere. Nothing new here. Moving on. Okay, and finally I want to show you some examples of local illumination, or a city, in the background. This is from Grand Canyon National Park. You can see uh, Las Vegas is one of them. And it's just to show it looks just like the sun going over the horizon. That's the point of me showing that. What? Let's take a look at the same image you provided. Obviously, the glow from the sunset is much larger and spans through a larger area. You can't even compare these two because they are so different. The sun is not 93 million miles away because if it was, the entire horizon would fade evenly. Dude, one of them is a light source from above, the other one is a light source from below. You can't compare these two. <sighs> anyway, that's the end of the video. He doesn't bring up any more new arguments. Since I cut it down a lot, if you guys want to see the original video, the link is in the description. I warn you though, it's 20 fucking minutes long, most of it being redundant and useless. And I'll leave it at that. See you guys in a few days for my next video. And stay in school.